Okay, so now the, uh, the vent's up in the ceiling of the bathroom, it's time for me to do the core drill, because now I've got a better idea of where I can go. Um, as you can tell, it's very hot up here already. I've only been up here for 10 minutes since drilling the hole. I'm sweating like mad already. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to core drill a hole kind of in that area-ish. Um, so uh, I'll let you uh, see me get started and then uh, we'll come back after I've done it. One thing to point out as well is when using a, a core drill, you do not want it on the hammer action, which is this one here. You need to have it on the drill. You don't want to be hammering through this block work and it, it will kill the, uh, the core drill as well. Okay then, so I've, Mark is definitely on, head torch is on, ready to go. Got the tunes blasting a rush out, hopefully I'll speed things up a little bit. So uh, it's time to make some noise and uh, hopefully the uh, dust extractor will do what it's supposed to do and uh, help me not make any mess. I've got a start of a hole, which means I don't need the pilot anymore. So it's just a case of uh, get on with it. Now this is going to be noisy and horrible and take a little while. So uh, one thing I did forget to say, which is a great tip, if you've got a piece of uh, sleeving or a chain or something like that, if you hang it over the bow or the shaft of the, of the core drill, it'll help tell you whether you're keeping it level or not because it'll move either one way or the other, depending which, depending if you're level or not. If you're level, it should stay pretty stationary. Right, let's get on with it. So, there we go. I didn't take that long at all. I did it on uh, only a couple of bars of the battery, I think. Uh, well, four amp hour battery down to one bar. Uh, that again, so you can see that. So, that was what it took. Uh, and more importantly, there's daylight. So what I need to do now, is I just need to measure the depth of the hole, and then I can adjust the bent ducts. It's just here actually. So, uh, so, because this would be too long, so I need to measure it and then cut back to the correct length, ready for inserting into the hole. So when fitting these ducts, there's three little pins run right, right around the edge which you've got to push in and then you can push the whole vent back in including the, the rubber seal. This allows you to be able to push it straight through the hole and out the back there there's a bit of string as well so that uh, when it goes to the other side you push it out to pop it and so it pops out open you pull the string to pull it back tight up against the wall exactly what I'm about to do now. When you do this, make sure you get it the right way up so the vents face the correct way because you obviously you don't want you don't want water getting in so if it was around the wrong way obviously the rain would get in. So yeah make sure common sense really that the vents face the correct way which is down. Now the other thing you've got to make sure of this is as well, when you, when you put the duct back in, so that the string, like I just did there, doesn't get caught in the pipe. So, here we go. 
fact, I could probably go in a bit further. It actually comes with a very crude piece of triangular carp uh, carpet. Actually comes with a very crude piece of triangular cardboard, which is designed so that once you've got it in the hole, make sure the string goes through it. You can use this to push the vent out of the wall. So make sure it's nice and level before you do so. There we go. I thought you probably don't know, don't know if you heard that or not, but there were clicks. It means all the pins and the springs released, which means it's on the outside. So you pull the cardboard back out. And you just pull the string back to make sure it's nice and tight up against the external wall. Now it's just a case of uh, fixing it in place. So the vent's now in place, as you can probably see right there. Uh, just to bear in mind that if you do fit this vent yourself, it doesn't come with washers. Uh, let's see if you can see on there at all very well. Uh, the screw holes are very, very close to the edge of the vent. Um, the hole that you drill through, there's just not enough plastic rim. So you need some washers on the screws because if you drill too close to the marking points of where the actual screws go in, you'll just go straight into the hole that you just core drilled. Another thing you'll need is one of these little three adapter extender pieces. Now, I'm gonna glue this in place just here because then that gives me something to, uh, to grab hold of and fix the, uh, the ducting to. I imagine they don't come with them because you could use uh, solid core ducting in a lot of applications. I'm just, choos I'm just choosing to use the uh, flexi insulated one. So I'm going to glue that in now. And whilst I'm waiting for that to go off, I'm going to sort the fan out and get that ready for installation. So here's the extractor fan. I've uh, fitted it to a wooden base and uh, there's the chain on top. It's a, uh, a cooker restraining chain. Uh, it's just cheap and cheerful, but it's strong enough and it will do the job fine. Uh, I've also fitted a backdraft shutter to the nose. Um, I do need to adjust the direction of that because you need to make sure obviously it can go the right, the right way and it can close and, and open. As it is at the moment, it won't work because one of the flaps, I'll show you, one of the flaps will just sit open like that and it'll be like that permanently. So I need to rotate that before fitting it. So now what I need to do is I need to put the ducting onto the end of the vent coming out the bathroom, attach it to the fan, and in fact then put the vent onto there. And then after that, it's just a case of uh, wiring it in. Um, as you can see, I've made my life a little bit easier by, uh, by pre-wiring it. So uh, here we go. Okay, so there we have it. As you can see, the double pole switch is in place, turned on. Extract the fans in place, and uh, you can see the ducting going, going down to the uh, bathroom vent, uh, and then then you got the the out, the outflow position. Time to go and put the uh, the light back on, which I said I would replace, but I don't have time to go and get one now, so I have to go back on temporarily until I can get a proper uh, decent replacement for it. I'm going to turn the power back on and uh, give it a go. There we have it. There is the nice, lovely, tidy vent on the outside of the building. A working extractor fan. As you can hear, it's uh, whirring away quite nicely. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the proper test kit to uh, make sure that it meets the flow rates, but as you saw from uh, the alleyway, it would be dangerous for me to try and get up to that height anyway without the appropriate gear. So the only way for me to really test it is to, well, have a shower. and. Believe you and me, after being up there, I now need one. So, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have any comments or questions, um, please leave them below and uh, I'll be happy to answer them. Again, thank you for watching. Right, off. Off you go. Go on. I need a shower. Go away.